Well, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Yes God Roundtable, honey. Hello. Hi. Hi. How y'all doing, girl? Less than highly favored. Mmm. 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 Yes. Did you say flavored? Yeah, I did. That yeah. Flavored? Oh, yeah. Well, that's new. Nice. I love it. Mmm. Mm. Flavored. Conscious, what's up, boo? I am wonderful. I'm good. Um, I had a photography gig at 8 a.m. this morning with y'all know him. You and Cats Meow was introduced to my wonderful one of my other good best friends and tattoo artist Spirit. Oh yeah, yeah. I got to sh shoot him butt ass naked and see that dick swing swing and things. It was very lit, honey. So looking forward to those images. So we'll have a backstage meeting, of course. We literally will. We absolutely will. It's tax season, so hello, God. <laughs> Just go on ahead. Girl, I'll give you ten dollars for a peekaboo, honey. Hello, God. Oh, there's the uncensored. You know what? We need to probably ask him to come on the round table one episode. Would totally I would definitely love to hear more of his perspectives. He's a very highly intelligent man. Yes. I but if you see these images, y'all are going to literally fucking gag. We gotta have him on for sure for the season. Round. Okay, yeah. I definitely would love that. It'd be he would be the first straight guy to grace this platform. Mm -hmm. Popping wide these cherry, just like you know you like it, honey. Bloody um, that cherry been done, <laughs> girl. <laughs> Yeah, cherry yeah, has been done. That you had Many done moves. like broccoli or something. Been done or something. <laughs> that broccoli's been done. Okay, period. Been done. <laughs> and my other one, PTO, prepare the others because it's going to be done. Hello. And it has been done. Oh, God. Oh, child. Well, obviously, you guys can see we're one man short. Um, Captivating Christian had to take some time off real quick, but hopefully, he will be back in the next. Hey man, he will be back in the next. Episode. Yes, Scott, we've been getting wonderful reports. Everybody's loving Christian as a new addition to the platform. So shout out to Christian, honey. Amen. You are getting the kids together. I just think some of them want to fuck you, but child. And that's okay. Y'all <laughs> continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Okay, hello, God. So you can see more uh, of Captain Christian. Uh, okay, yes. In the name. <laughs> so tonight we have a wonderful episode for you. What happened? It's the end of name for me. He caught it. In the name. In the oh. Name. <laughs> oh, my bad. The Lord knows my heart, my soul. Girl. Let's hold. We'll get into the religious. Well, actually, I want a religious episode in one of these season in this season too. So we'll get into some things too. We got to get into some more weird things, you know, that I think we need to get in a uh, get in yeah. touch with. But um, in this episode, um, and welcome everybody in the chat. I do appreciate you guys for joining us. Please, you know, again, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Everyone on this panel's information is in the description box. So click their links for easy access. Hello, God. Amen. Wonderful, creative individuals, dynamic personalities, and wonderful content. Hello. Tramel's a singer, songwriter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, how's everything going? You have the Sony thing going. Oh shit! I got a meeting with them um, tomorrow. Um, okay. So we're actually preparing for an uh, album release. It's gonna be a live band situation. Yay! You know, we're gonna perform our music live for the album release. So yes, I'll keep y'all informed if y'all would love to come. I would love to y'all for y'all to come and drive on down or drive on up or however you move. I don't know. Oh, that's right. Or give us a virtual option so we can still support. You know, I will probably do a live or something, you know. So yeah, you have your man see. holding the camera. Yeah, absolutely. You know, on a tripod, no, because if you perform a song and he gets too hype, I can't be trying to hold it. So just don't stand there like this. Yeah, just have oh, he it gets all he gets all the excitement at home, child. Hello, God. He better be his <laughs> own also in the in public. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. I don't like for my man to be too excited in public. That made me feel weird. <laughs> when he's supporting you and uplifting you? No, not, I'm not talking about that part. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I hear I'm talking you. about the other part. Like, I bitch, you. I want him to look solemn and mad and angry, so none of these hoes approach. Unapproachable. Thank you. Unapproachable. Unapproachable. I love that. <laughs> don't you think it sucks that we have to live our lives that way? I don't. Because bitches try it. They definitely try it. 
Yeah, they do. 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 Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Okay, these no. hoes, uh-uh. See, even if he do deny, these hoes still be trying to play them little games. Like, oh, he's just playing. <laughs> his job as a man who is now kept, his job is to deny them hoes as often as the Bible says to forgive these hoes. Mm-hmm. I want to deny them, too. I want to know. Or they will be met with my samurai sword. Absolutely. Hello, God. Because I'm, I'm going medieval on her. Behead your ass, child, period. That's what I loved about the old Queen Elizabeth. She may have been a racist bigot, honey, but that oh, old... I mean, I heard she got Miss Nadine. Oh, no, not this Elizabeth. Her great-great-grandmother, Elizabeth Child. I've been watching Rain lately, and I'm learning a lot she about is her. her great-great-grandmother. Have you seen how old she looks? <laughs> I wonder when she is going to die, though, because she has really fought through time and space, child. To, <laughs> like, <laughs> this girl. I'm just like, girl, what's going to happen? The fall of the... Well, she has no real relevance now. Any, We don't recognize monarchs anymore. They just keep her for show and tell. I didn't expect her to outlive Cicely Tyson. Like, I just didn't see that coming. Let alone Betty White. When you have links to all the magic in the world, honey, when you when you are out here, um, have your ancestry has stolen all of the good books and the, the Dead Sea Scrolls child, you can accomplish great things with mixing those into the right type of spells and concoctions. Or if you've made the right kind of deal with a certain type of devil, Child, they say she gives prolonged life to the girls who surrender their soul, but that's neither here nor there. But you know, yeah, yeah, maybe she, um, have y'all y'all remember uh, what's that damn show? Uh, American Horror Story Coven. Uh huh. Maybe she like Madame uh, Laveau Larry or whatever her name was when she was okay. Like, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Blood and all stuff, black you know? magic. That she was African. I Queen Elizabeth could never touch. <laughs> and she looks like she could never because I'm talking she, about the one, the one that she gave her tears to, Delphine. Uh, the, oh, okay. Delphine. Yeah, she was she was using um her her you know her servant's blood to you know keep herself young. It wasn't working. Well, she was praying to Papa Tunde, child. Papa, t- <laughs> she Papa Tunde, <laughs> Papa Tunde, honey, was right here blessing the girls. <clears throat> the Papa Legba. <laughs> Papa Let, yeah, that one. Child, you know what scene that really took me out? Actually, no, we're not even going to go there. Let's move on with the show because I was about to get this. I have to recognize myself sometimes. Amen. Amen. All right. So we have a great episode for you guys. It's a little, it's going to be a little bit controversial. So weak stomachs, please leave the room. I definitely do appreciate that. Um, and, and, but I want the ones who would think differently also, because I love, to, it's not, this isn't a place for hateration, honey, save that for, you know, <laughs> other things. This is just for understanding from the black gay male perspectives. Okay. Or at least some of the things that we've, you know, learned along our journey as black gay men. Amen. So the first question I have for you guys, the first topic of discussion is, how do you feel about gay men who eventually feel like they want to be straight? Do you believe it's possible for gay men to successfully accomplish this without reverting back to old gay ways? Shout out to Andrew Caldwell, honey. Um, And do you believe that there are contributing factors as to why this is? Wait, 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 wait. Before we get into it, are we talking about gay men who really try and go out and get girlfriends and get wives and have kids on people who are gay and do what Andrew Caldwell is doing and just proclaim to be straight? <laughs> Both, actually. But mostly the, the first one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Take it away. I'll I give my... I don't know how I feel about it. Um... I can understand the curiosity, especially if you've never, because there are certain gay men out here who have never dealt with a woman and, you know, has never even, you know, itched that curiosity. So I guess sometimes the curiosity is, you know, so, so major and so intriguing to them that they they go to see if they like it. And sometimes they do, because to some people, sex is just sex. And I think a lot of these people are probably gay because that's the first experience they had. They liked it and they went with it. Maybe you were just a feminine man. And because gay people recognized you, you was like, oh, this is my tribe. And you know, then you get a little piece of pussy and now you <laughs> you wanna, you know, travel that road. Um, I've heard it happen. I've heard people tell me they want to try to do it. 
I have yet to see that happen. Um, I've seen the inverse though. I was one of the inverse. The people who kind of knew they were different, kind of identified with the gay people, but was like, nah, because of what the church says and because of what I see, I'm supposed to be with a girl. And I tried it and it did not work. And then I discovered this is not who I am. So I see a lot of that, but not much of the, the opposite. And do you believe that there is a contributing factor to why these gay men feel the need to even try to be straight? Except you feel like so pressures of the world and the, and the yeah. ideologies that surround homosexuality. I mean, because at the end of the day, and I may step on some toes when I say this, people can scream to the mountaintops, I don't give a fuck what nobody got to say. And nobody think, yeah, you do. You may not care to a high degree of like, I care what everybody in the room thinks, but some people's opinion matter to you. And, you know, if if you want to be accepted by a culture, if you don't, you know, if you see, if you think that the grass is greener on that side, you may want to hop that fence, you know? So a lot of people, that's why people get beards, you know, that's how that became a thing. You know, there are, even in the church, there are a lot of people who I'm just like, one plus one equals two. I get it, but it, it, it's societal norms that they try to fit into because the world is progressive, but there are still, you know, there there's a heavy hold on tradition and this isn't right and this isn't how it should, you know. And it's like it's ripping the world in two because the world is moving forward, but there are people who are literally like dragging it backwards, and the world isn't elastic, so eventually it will tear into. If it hasn't already. Hmm. So, but that, that means those people will be doing it in a way that is not themselves, though, when you put it that way. These people will Absolutely. be living in a world of regret and resentment of themselves and the world they're trying to, you know, assimilate to. I mean, well, I will say that there are some people who definitely will live in worlds of regret, but then there are some people who, and I'll use a personal experience. Um, so they're like my father, I, for example, did try to pressure me into, you know, being straight, of course, was like, if you don't do this, you're selfish. If you don't do this, then you don't care about our family. You don't care about, pro, you know, prolonging our family line and stuff like that. And the pressures of you know, saying this will happen to you if you, you know, go this route and stuff like that. So the pressure is to be, I guess, normal, if yeah. they want to call it that, is it's very strong. And will it be regret? No, because you, you're pleasing someone. You're pleasing the people that you care about the most. You're pleasing your family. You know, so I don't think a lot of people, I, I think there might be some people who definitely regret it, but then there are some people who, like, this is going to be the life that I'm going to live because I'm doing this for my family. And you can't regret doing something for your family, right? Yeah. So there are some people who are probably okay with it. I mean, they're sacrificing a big part of their lives, their happiness, you know, their potential happiness. But at the same time, the, the trade-off that they're getting might be enough for them. So they might not have any regrets. And so they'll live that life if they can. Mm. I, I just still feel like there's, we always will look at the small bits, like the holes in our heart. And that's something that I feel like, no matter how much you feel like there's the give and take, like, okay, you feel like you're getting more out of it than not. And that you could be blissful in that, I guess. But eventually yeah. I feel like it tears away at you that you're not living divinely in your truth. Next thing you know, you're a Caitlyn Jenner girl in your 80,000 year old mm -hmm. age child trying to <laughs> finally become what you want to become. And girl, please, you have a few good what? years left, girl, and your kneecaps have been gone, child. People who decide that they want to live freely. You have people like, and God bless the dead, you have people like Luther that die in their like, uh-uh. The people who need to know, know. And so y'all, I'm going to dance with my father and, ask, and say, excuse me, miss. You know, like, I'm not about to, I'm not about to push that. I'm not about to push that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not about to push yeah, that. Don't do Luther like that, child. Yeah, everybody do Luther like that. He died with that. He didn't come out, you know. 
So if he had a boyfriend, it was very Queen Latifah. It was very under the table. Oh, he had and a boyfriend now. Patty LaBelle of said that. <laughs> of course he did. Patty well, you told, know what someone Patty said told it all on my what happens. They said if you pay attention to his funeral, the guy sitting to the front was like supposed to be his longtime boyfriend. Okay. I never saw the video, but that's what people kept saying. And sometimes it's, you know, you trying to fit into societal norms and your parents trying to fit you into societal norms. Because who's to say he didn't have a conversation with them and they was just like, as long as the world don't know what you're doing, we cool. Lee Ward can come by, he can come to the family gatherings, he can sit on the front row when you die. But the world may better not know who he is. And it sucks that he had to compromise his love while his sisters and aunties and uncles were just, you know, living freely. But it is what it is. You know what I referenced to? I referenced Brokeback Mountain. I know that's not from the black gay male experience, but like that movie to me was so relevant because of the ending. Like these men lived all of this life, even married to women, even when it's so as much as to be neighbors to each other to, so they can continue their love flings. Just to put on that front, like all of the years of unhappiness and like you still love. feel lonely. And I just don't, I I'm, I guess I'll, I said I was going to say mine for the last conscious. I'm sorry, but I I just but that wasn't it. that wasn't love. You can't love somebody and eat beans before you fuck them. Well, that was in the wild wild west, and these are white men we're talking about, y'all. They, honey, you ate a we, whole can of beans, and then you decided. That's what they do in these frat house videos. Now child. you know that they was still, you know, it's that was movie magic. They was definitely clean during that whole sit, that whole scene. Now nothing happened there. It was I'm magical. Sure. Yeah, it, it was euphoric. Even it was euphoric. There was no smells. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> I just feel like it's, it's it's horrible to live that way. Um, now, I get it if it's from a real place. And when I also talk about contributing factors, I also want to talk about the heavy weight that religion plays on this way of thinking that a lot of, you know, homosexual men have when they go to thinking about like, okay, maybe it's better to be straight. And I think a lot of times the religious communities, more specifically in the black religious communities, there's this pressure on black and gay men to, because what do we always hear? It seems like, that's why I stopped going to church. It seems like every church, I used to be a church hopper. Hello, God. There are club hoppers, child, but I went, I traveled through churches, girl. Okay. Mostly for the bake sales and the fried catfish dinners, girl. But that was in a whole fat life. But <laughs> I went and every time it seemed when I would present myself, the conversation of the pastor would change to talking about gay things. And it's just how bad gay is and just heavily preaching that and whooping you over the head with that child. Like that man in that video was whooping those girls with that belt child. Yes. And them, and them dumb bitches took it. Anyway, um, girl, <laughs> girl. <laughs> It's just it's the cult mind frame for me, child. I, I love I would love that kind of power persuasion, girl. Because when you got the girls giving that money, giving that money, girl, I, bitch, giving that money, girl. Your tithe, your offer, your heart earned money, and you giving up some to be beat. To be beat? Girl, that's I, imagine it's the power, girl. It's not God, girl. This, but hold on, real quick though. It's not God, girl. The power you must wield. To let someone spit all over your face, to let someone beat you with a belt, or even fan you. Well, like why would you want that much power? It's giving black men. Girl, don't it's it's black giving, giving black get me out of poverty, good. girl. It's, it's getting, giving. It's massacre. No, no, no. <laughs> it's giving. It's giving. No, what I'm saying though is it's it's the opposite. I'm actually joking on those fucking idiots who actually sit around and let their cells be brainwashed like that to the point. You know, getting back on topic where we brainwash homosexual men that want to divinely live in this truth, but they have to question themselves because of these these old religious ideals that have been passed down through the root of slavery. Mm. It it bothers me, but I'm going to stop conscious. Please give your thoughts, honey. Can you reiterate the question again? Okay. How do you feel about gay men who eventually feel like they want to be straight? And then in tandem with that is, do you believe it's possible for a gay man to successfully accomplish this without reverting back to old gay ways? And do you believe that there is a contributing factor as to why this is? Well, God damn, okay. A lot of questions. I mean, you know, they kind of flow in. Um, I feel sorry for men 
I feel sorry for anybody struggling with any part of their identity. It's tough, yeah. whether that be mixed race people, whether that be uh, people who have a lot of spiritual intersections, especially within the black community, because there's a lot of closed mindedness. I certainly struggle with uh, men and women who are struggling in their orientation. Now, do I believe that it can happen? Um, so I was recently on another content creators platform by the name of Jody's Corner. OYB knows who that is. Um, cis, a cisgender heterosexual man. He brought me to his man cave with his boys and we had this like nuanced discussion about sexuality. And, you know, sexuality is a spectrum. I think that both sides are very ignorant, to be quite honest. I, I think heterosexuals and homosexuals both are ignorant about their own orientation uh because we live in a in a system based upon classism we like to categorize everything so gay straight bisexual that's it but there's like 10 percent of this in you there's five percent of that in you there's 15 percent of that in you and um to bring that home recently me and one of my boyfriends had a threesome with a woman who i like to squirt all over <laughs> hold on bitch hold on bitch shout out to one of the boyfriends i know that's right honey Yes. So, I um, you know, he was fucking her doggy style, and she squirted all over me, and um, I felt like I had been drowned and drenched and baptized in the name of the father, son, and heterosexuality, and <laughs> you know, there was an awakening of such, and I walked away from that experience very like, oh, you know, and kind of appalled and somewhat offended and vexed. And, you know, I sat and sat within it and unpacked this shit down to a bone marrow. And I said, oh my God, I am like 2% heterosexual for real. And I had never really rendezvoused with the 2% of me that's heterosexual. So, when I think about the way sexuality really works, I'm thinking to myself, like, how how many people are identifying as straight or gay who may be really on the spectrum and there's some pansexual, bisexuality. You know, we talk mm -hmm. about, about how a lot of niggas who get locked up allow Big Dick Derek on cell block eight to bust their pussy <laughs> open. And then we condemn these men when they get out, child, because these men be like, girl, I'm straight. And um, maybe or maybe not. But all I know is that weird things happen when struggle and temptation and honey buns got to be afforded, bitch. So, you know, we do all type of things in the strangeness of the midnight hour, girl. So, you know, rather your 2% comes out under struggle context, girl, or rather it's a free will, wild, share ass, live your life, bitch, like me, who's just going to go for the gusto. I don't even know what to say anymore about sexuality, but what I do know is that in the words of in the boat, bitch, free your motherfucking mind, ho, oh and live the bestest of your life. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Stop the press, child. Bitch. PTO prepare the others. Okay. Because when I watch the replay, bitch, I'm just gonna start from 25. I'm just gonna start from, from when he starts talking. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. <sighs> I needed this. This this is girl. My camera said bitch. Prepare the others. <laughs> PTO bitch. Prepare the others. Prepare the prepare others. this damn camera, because girl, please. Oh, yeah, some, I, but I get what you're saying. Some people, just want, with that, honey. some people just want what they want. Can I, can I ask a follow-up? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to laugh out my curls, child. So when the, <laughs> um, when the juices <laughs> hit you, where did it, where did it land first? My face was directly under her first pussy. <laughs> did you taste some of it? Of course. What did it and, taste like? And it was just liquid. It didn't have a taste. 
That's what I try to tell people when I tell them that I ate a girl out before. They yeah. always ask me what it tastes like. I, it has yeah. no taste. Oh, I made sure that that bitch mm-hmm. put a hydraulic to her pussy and dip <laughs> her pussy and <laughs> put a fucking pressure washer to her pussy, girl, before mama even went under. So. Oh, my God. Did you pull your hair back into a ponytail? <laughs> yeah, it was in a top knot. Mm. And you know what's the reason I'm just so like oh I'm just like oh girl is like you know first of all I'm gay gay <laughs> like I cannot I, can, I have been almost forced to lay with fish before child and no offense I know he, girls don't like that word fish child but that's just you know the tea for right now okay and I just oh I just can't I just can't I just can't. I was imagining that scene on Noah's Ark when Brandy had came over and it was just mm. like and Noah was like bitch I was doing just fine. You was in your feelings. Yeah, <laughs> no one got to go for it. I just, I just, uh, uh, I couldn't imagine that. And and I, from the videos that I've seen, because I do watch heterosexual pornography every blue moon child. Um, and when I see fish get to the point where they are fishing, girl, you know, I'm just like, no, man, Pam, like I could. That's a lot. Like that's not even a squirt, girl. That is like wade in the water type shit. Like, oh, girl, like you right. are going to be it's baptized. Like you said, you were baptized in her juices, and it just the floodgates literally opened upon your ass. Like, I just know. Mm-mm. And women are different from men. So once a woman comes, that's when her engine starts. Like, she's ready to go. Yeah, she was fucking the shit up, my dude. See, after you come, it's like, mm, like that's the engine starter right there. <sighs> were you jealous okay. at all? What? No. Oh, what a girl. Jealous? They're definitely not monetizing this episode, so I'm not even <laughs> worried about it at this point. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just a caveat. I learned early on, in the words of Brandy, to never say never. I didn't know what that was going to mean for me, but I found out quickly at the age of 18 when I was dating this very unattractive but ugly-ass nigga named Justin. And he had pressed and pressed and pressed and pressed and harassed the girl, sexually harassed me and shit. And I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and give her a whip around the corner. So we started dating, and I, the whole like he was a nice guy, great sense of humor. And then one day, maybe like a week into us courting, he was just like, "Are you going to kiss me good night?" And I was like, "I mean, if you want to ask, no, but of course, like I will." And he leaned in to kiss me, and it was the first time in my life I ever experienced what Alicia Keys caught butterflies and i felt Mm. this vibration all over me and from that moment me and my wig was deeply in love with this nigga you could not tell me this wasn't the finest sexiest chocolatest ass just i mean you could not tell me this nigga was not him he the great i am from the old testament like from the point of that kiss something happened in my brain chemistry that shifted my whole neurological circuits around. And that's been the only time I experienced something like that. But what it taught me is that you can say what the fuck you want to say about yourself. There is just always a part of you that's hitting in the dark. And it's not until you become experiential that that Mm -hmm. curtain gets ripped the fuck back. We rely so much on what we think we know about ourselves based upon not even Which having hmm? Which curtain? <laughs> the gay one. Or the straight one. Or the yeah, straight whatever one. curtain you they haven't looked behind. Well, or the, or the you know, like just be just because you have a straight experience don't mean you're straight or bisexual. You could just, you know. I don't, know. I, think no, I don't think there's anything wrong with being sexually fluid, though, because there have been even moments in my life where, girl, there was this one time I was drunk and this stud wanted to service the doll, honey. And when I get drunk, I get a little bit more manly sometimes. And I was sure about to let her handle this business, honey. But the Supreme Queen, hello, God, <laughs> Queen Supreme, oh, bitch, that bitch rolls up from the depths and said, girl, we ain't that drunk. No, man, Pam, we are not that drunk. No, man. That Queen Elizabeth came out and said, no. <laughs> okay. yeah, off with your head, bitch. No. What's the tea? Like, we ain't that drunk. But there have been moments, so I, I don't have nothing. Pro- but it's just like, I don't know. That goes into the whole label conversation. I think we did talk about that last season. But 
you know, I feel like do what you want to do and do what you want to do. Don't let nobody pressure you or anything. And it even goes for getting back to the question and, you know, we'll move on to the next topics. <clears throat> but um, I just feel like don't let outside forces pressure you to the point where you're questioning your own existence in this world. Um, if you're confronted with your own ways, like if you read something or if you're experiencing something like, you know what, because I have met dudes before that wanted an experience. Huh? Unorganic. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't let the world force you into that shit. You know, because I have I have met men that just say, let me experience it. Because I've heard that too in the inverse. Someone tell me, well, how would you know you don't like it if you never tried it? And I say, you know, you're kind of right about that. But bitch, I know me. And I know the mini me is not gonna get no kind of (laughs) pleasure from that. Especially when you're a full like a bottom bottom, you know what I mean? Like (laughs) I like the pressure. (laughs) Moving on, but yeah, don't let nobody stress you. <laughs> don't let nobody make you feel like you're less than because a certain way you need to probably find your tribe. And I say a lot of times that happens early on because if you're still questioning yourself, that means it's like the early stages of you realizing that you may be a queen yeah. of queens, honey. Hello, God. Um, but walk in that experience that a little bit more before you go ahead making final decisions or allowing. That's why I say don't talk to too many bitches either about your business because low keys a lot of people don't even like our community like that. Even these so-called allies out here, they don't really see it for us like that. So if you got a homegirl or homeboy you're going to confide in, make sure they're the right type of people to have those conversations with because more than likely because you're already questioning yourself, you're going to let almost anything anyone else says to you almost kind of like force you into a, a left or a right position on the matter. Hello, God. So we good on this? We good to move on from this topic? Or any I last? I just want to say one thing. I mean, mm-hmm. You know the position that you take is real when you have to say it twice. When you say, I'm a bottom bottom, that's how you know you're a bottom. Like, I'm a top top, but I'm not. But... <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm a bottom official, but like I say, I've had experiences. I don't, I don't block that, but that's how I realized. But you really a bottom bottom. You'll do some shit here and there if the if the weather's right. If Mercury's in retrograde, girl, the moon is full, honey. Hello, God. Shout out to Brandy yet again in this episode, girl. Like, yes, but on regular days, Monday, Friday, 365 and leap years, I prefer to be the queen, the the nigga bitch. You know, but that's all. That's the position I play in bed. Any other time out of that, I'm, I serve top energy in just regular life. But sexually speaking, yeah. But after that, child, you better not try to tell me what to do because I'm going to slap the fuck out of your ass and kick you out of the door. Hello, bitch. <sighs> all right. Now let's get into some things. Parenting. Hello, God. We're talking about parenting, y'all. Girl, if you swoop that hair behind that ear one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I'm telling us, it's getting there, girl. She's she's experiencing shrinkage right now, honey. Hello, God, but she's she's, right. she she's there, good. honey. She's healthy. Shout out to Tika Naturals coming soon. Tika Naturals, I'm waiting. Shout out to Tika Naturals. <laughs> it's coming, coming soon. You're, You're coming, coming, coming soon. soon. You're coming soon. <laughs> she's girl. coming, girl. She's coming, girl. Part of the unity here, oil. Hello, God. Anyway. So forever there has been a controversial discussions on the topic of the negative notion that gay people shouldn't raise children. So let's talk about it. So I've done a little bit of, you know, research before, you know, we went live and it just skimmed through some things that I thought were very interesting. I didn't realize there was such a big gap between the differences um, between gay people raising children versus you know any other sexual group more 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 likely be talking about heterosexual couples child okay heterosexual people or individuals and i found it staggering that it was stated just a couple of things i'm going to cite off uh kids had higher self-esteem kids had more family involvement because come to find out girl <laughs> the gays actually because we seek out adoptions because we seek out surrogacies because we actually plan ahead for these moments um we're more likely to raise the child in a more functional household basically and you'll be more involved because this was our intention to get involved with being a parent most parenting situations take place accidentally girl that's what the article said accidents girl you know quita and todd decided girl to have a rump in the hay down to the peach tree park child hello god and next thing you know, she realizes she's preggers. 
Daddy's not sticking around because she was a one night stand, honey. Hello, God. And Keisha's like, girl, my family it was Keisha Quita. It was one of them hoes. It probably both of them hoes too. They, they got ran through by Todd. So what happened is they both find out that they're pregnant, plan low down to the local Planned Parenthood. Hopefully, Joe Biden and the girls can keep funding going on. Amen. To continue to, those efforts. And then they realize that my child will be raised in a broken home starting. Is off. this the synopsis of a movie, or did you just? I'm just telling. It? I'm just telling. This is the basic formula for a lot of you know at home situations. Let's keep it real. And because they're religious, grand great grandmother and them uh, beating to them, honey, and their psyche, that girl, we're not having abortions, and neither do we have five hundred dollars. So you're gonna have this baby. We're gonna move you to Mississippi in the backwoods and let the wolves raise them, girl. Hello, God, because we don't want that shame on this family, girl. We don't want that shame. True tea. True tea. My grandma <laughs> tells me about those days all the time. Hmm. So Another thing I thought interesting was children are happier. They're more balanced in their life. They actually test higher in school. They're more likely to graduate. Hello, God. You know, they also said, they said, because the gays, and I'm not self-aggrandizing here, hello, God, because I'm far from this. They said, because the gays are more likely to be wealthier. Hello, God. They're more likely to be happier with their own lives. Hello, God. They're more likely to just basically provide love and support for their children. Therefore, their children grow up to being productive, happy, yeah. successful, non-hateful bitches of society. You know what I mean? Pat ourselves on the back, gays, because they love to say that we can't do it. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you sounded like we voting out Camilla Harris and Joe Biden, child. Yes, yes that's it. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a little more time. Like, God damn it, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was better at it than now. I just, I would have thought I would have saw something different, but I'm glad that I saw that because <clears throat> there are a lot of experiences out here. I've heard a lot of parents say, oh, they don't want their kids around, you know, gay people. But when you look at your own life, there's broken pieces there. There's and it, and it bleeds off into your children. You wonder why they want to become school shooters, girl, or they sit here and they get on drugs, girl. They're in and out of people's rehabs. Um, you know, God knows what else is is taking place in the, down the path for these kids that come from these broken down ass homes. So, <clears throat> sorry, y'all, airport. Um, on flight ninety nine. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, straight people shouldn't have kids. Because it seems like no. That, I mean, who gonna have them if they don't? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, there's a couple of no. Girls there's a way. Babies, there is definitely is a way. We need some accidents out here now. We do need I some accidents. I choose two of lesbians that's willing to carry artificial. Everybody's not really. I, I, Unfortunately, like it's it's good to say say that those statistics are there, but not every gay person is trying to procreate. Like it's not it's more so rare than it is like common. Because you know, gay people can't cons can't especially gay men can't couple properly for the most part, like on a well, that's what it was. That's the article was basically talking about is that gay people intentionally, when they get to a certain stage in their life, or whether yeah. they're a couple or just an individual seeking out wanting a child, or the different options that are available to them to have children, it's said because the child is happier and they're more involved in the child's life and the activity, the daily activities, because they intentionally sought this out. Yeah, these accidental pregnancies. No wonder little Taekwon child's daddy's not showing up to the goddamn football game, child. His name is Taekwon. But they, there's a lot more Taekwons than there are. Um, uh, uh, are. <laughs> there's a lot more. There's a lot more accidents than there are plans now. That's and that's what I'm talking about. I feel like where it is because these parents were not ready, whereas the gay people were were like financially mentally. There ain't too many gay people that want to do that though. Do you want to have children now? No. Who, me? Both all y'all. No. Not right now in this moment. And that's the great thing about being gay is that I can choose when I want to have kids. So when you intend, when you set that intention forward later on in your life, if and when that ever comes for you, it will, I feel like you'll have more of a success rate raising your Absolutely. children Absolutely. than someone who really didn't think about it. Someone who didn't plan ahead and actually make things happen. 
Because, you know, us girl, before we even get to a certain stage, whether it's marriage or whether it's kids or whatever, we always want to make sure our pocketbooks are on swole, our bank accounts are looking clean as hell, our credit is swept up and nice. So that's what I felt when the article mentioned wealthy, um, usually gay men are wealthier because we like to build upon before we actually make big life decisions that like that. We want to make sure we can afford that shit. Gay men versus heterosexual couples or gay couples versus heterosexual couples? The article was actually talking about gay couples, but then I thought about it. It could basically be the same if you were an individual because you can't really draw that comparison too close because more of what we're talking about with the accidents, girl, they ain't nobody married over there. They're, them kids ain't coming from a two-parent household. So I thought about it too. An individual gay person probably stands in their, the, the same statistics as a couple versus, you know, the, the, the opposite. That would actually be true. Gay uh, men, specifically in contrast to cis heterosexual men, are uh, statistically end up making twice the income of their heterosexual counterpart in adult life. They are three times more likely to actually graduate high school, go to college, and be degree than their cis heterosexual counterpart. Uh, but a big reason why gay men are outdoing their heterosexual male counterparts is because a lot of us experienced so much rejection and weren't and didn't feel comfortable in a lot of social spaces and especially male spaces that we ended up really focusing upon our education and our books and our accolades. This is also something that's kind of been a dualistic thing for gay men because the fact that most of us was raised in a culture that did not make a lot of space for us and we had to find other ways to give ourselves value like we didn't get that from the church who was telling us that we we're going to bust hell wide open and that god hates you mom and dad and grandpa and your peers are in agreement that you also are uncouth you are uh doing something against thou so there's almost, and this is why, for me, my personal assessment of the gay community is that we have a big narcissism issue, not really of our own, but just because the circumstances kind of make, forced us to obsess over ourselves and to focus upon ourselves in a like hyperized way. Um, so, gay men are out here, yes, kicking ass and taking aims and all of that in education and social economically um but on a tail end um it's led to a lot of superficiality and materiality within the lgbt experience um now when y'all were talking about the gay um queer people being <laughs> better parents yeah that also would be in tandem with that because when you are queer and you are so fucking nuanced and you have such an intersectional existence and you've been crucified and witch hunted against by your society, this also gives birth, in the words of Mariah Carey, to a total vision of love. So it makes no, it's not surprising to me that we are very crafty and almost masterful in the art of love because we know so much what it's like to not be loved. I can imagine that the way that we are raising our children is open-minded, very supportive, allowing them to have autonomy and agency, allowing them to um, seek understanding and encouraging that because that's what was required of us. And um, we, out of having parents who didn't know what they were doing, at the same time, knew exactly what they should have been doing for us. And now we are in a position to give that to y'all's point, the kids we can also plan to have. So this increases a whole lot of likelihood of healthier children, of more successful children, children who have a clearer understanding of who the fuck they are because they've been encouraged to be an individual, not to be conformist because most queer people didn't have the luxury of even conforming. So we're not even encouraging that. We're encouraging independence and self-knowing and so mm -hmm. all of that in conjunction mm -hmm. it makes sense yeah. why those statistics look the way they mm -hmm. are hello i was just about to hop on i was just about to say something about that because like gay people are forced to go against the grain you know because we're gay because we have to live our lives to the beat of our own drum so it's just like 
when we parent our kids, it, the last thing we're thinking is how we were parented because it made us, you know, rebel and, you know, turn away from our parents. Whereas the straight people only want to be larger versions of their parents. I want to be just like my daddy. My daddy used to do, you know, like, so I think that plays a big role as to why the parenting style is so different because we're innovative in our thinking. We want to, you know, I think we remember that we were children and how we felt when we were parented that way. And a lot of us turned out fucked up. Like it, we had to go to therapy. We had to get a great circle of friends around us. We had to reassure our, we had to parent ourselves as adults. You and know what like, kills me? I'm sorry to cut you off because you just made me think about something. Um, not directly what you said, but it just jogged something in my head. Um, and I think I've actually openly talked about this before too. We have to, especially in the black community, let me speak that for real. We have a fucked up way of utilizing the same pain and fear that the slave masters put on our ancestors, girl. If y'all see the way y'all treat y'all motherfucking kids, think about the way that our ancestors were treated and you'll kind of see a big comparison. And, and I think that's what's breeding a lot of fucked up youth of today. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we need to do some work on that shit. Uh, first of all, especially in the straight world. And you know what I mean? Because there's there's a lot of that abuse and, and fear hanging over these children's head, girl. And again, you want to know why they develop to be school shooters, girl, or are hating their own existence or out here doing God knows what just to feel something, girl. Right. Yeah. Well, black boys ain't shooting school. Who's school black, shooting, man? Yeah, black boys ain't shooting for schools. It's the white kids that ain't getting no. No, no, no. They, they get a little bit, a lot of freedom now. They get but a lot of freedom like, yeah, to like, express themselves in the in the wrong way. You know, Susan Q ways. ain't really telling you know little Tommy don't do that. He she's just like, well, what do you want to do? He's like, fuck <laughs> you, mom. <laughs> And that's that's clear. Clear. Like, you don't shoot up the schools, but well, we I definitely up. believe that structure is needed. And we shoot yeah. up, yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely so, like, like structure uh, is heterosexuals needed. are like more so into breeding more like generational curses, whereas uh, homosexuals are more likely to break them when it comes to like parenting of children. Like, well, because I, I want to treat you like better than my parents treated me, versus that. I want to treat you like my parents treated me. In essence, Jamel just said we know how to breed better. Yeah. I mean, I don't ever want people to think that I, I have this like negative notion to it. Um, obviously that that hits me a little bit because I don't like when people try to say that you know gay people shouldn't raise kids. I had a friend, well, she ain't a friend no more. Hell of God, who said that she called her. How you call yourself my friend, but you say to me, "Oh, I don't think gay people should be able to raise kids." As if, and her only excuse was because I just think that child might grow up to be gay. Girl, you act like the same conversation we had last season with Little Nas X. Y'all act like being gay is something that, hey, here you go, girl. You know, like, I, you got it. You know, my germs. You can shut all that down with, and the inverse is what, him turning out like you? Or you could be like, well, not all of us had gay parents. So what does that tell you, Saweetie? Most of us. 99% of gay people had straight parents. Absolutely. That's how we got here. Like, that shit wasn't out artificial. Like, Y'all fucked up mom. somewhere. <laughs> Maybe we can do it right. Hey, Dad, wherever you are. And we, just, we just started seeing gay shit on TV. I just started seeing dick, like, in the 2010s. So it's like, all I had was titties in my face. And I still like oh, me. Like, oh, oh, only twenty ten. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I, on television, not. On oh, okay. TV. I thought I was about to say, girl, you a lady. Oh, you know how like now, like <laughs> with the P Valleys and stuff, you're starting to see. Okay. Dick. Oh, on TV. Okay. Okay. I hear it. It wasn't normalized, but the titties was all yeah. in your face since like the early two thousands for me. Yeah. And you know, it didn't affect my. Okay. And I tell you, Euphoria has been so interesting this season. I ain't never seen so you much. You know what pisses me off? I found out, Jamel, 90% of them dicks are prosthetics. Like, some of them you can tell are really <coughs> They dad, look prosthetic. I can't that imagine them being that small. Yeah, that daddy was a prosthetic. Mm. But that boy at the beginning of season one, when they all had the strip, that was his dick. I do want to say this, too. I kind of forgot what I wanted to say. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, this heterosexual shit. 
It's so funny to me. Um, oh, I was on a panel like l- last year with a girl. She had wanted to, she, she's a cisgender heterosexual woman, has a bunch of, of kids. She had invited me and some other queer people to be on a panel to discuss these things. And she was like, Oh, yeah, you know, my best friend gay, and I love gays, and you know, a rainbow and everything. And she was like, We got to a part of the conversation to YB's situation, but she was like, but if I have to be honest, I don't, I'm confused as to if I'm, I'm so open to gay people and love gay people, but I don't want my child to be gay. And I said, well, it's only for two reasons. You either have a internalized homophobia and there are tiers and levels and hierarchies to homophobia. So when most people think of being homophobic, they think of the most explicit expression of it, like calling someone the F-bomb and burning them up and setting their ass on fire and shit. But there are low-level covert expressions of homophobia, like not wanting your child to be gay, like not wanting to have gay people in your home, not wanting to shake the hand or hug a gay person or moving extra out of the way when somebody who is gay is coming through or whatever it is. Or there's this other thing that you are holding subconsciously, which is the concern for the quality of life for your child because you are aware of just how fucked up it is for gay people in this world. But the cure to that, because I hear this on my channel a lot of time when we have this discussion, is a lot of straight people will say, well, I don't want my child to be gay because I know what gay people go through. That's exactly why you come back homophobia, not homosexuals. If you would come back homophobia, you are, would make the world safer and a better place for queer people to exist within. So the goal is not to not have gay children or trans children, but to actually use your privilege to combat the systemic ass issue of homophobia that perpetuates any fucking community. That's the result. To your point real quick, and when we talk about, you know, that part, the education part, we are talking about the future, right? Like the kids, the kids, the future, the future. The future, this next generation, if we can't deal with another bat of hate, another 20 years of hate in any conversation, whether it's LGBT related or whether it's Black Lives Matter related, all of that hate will eventually bring a mass extinction to those particular social groups, period. So when we talk about the influence more than likely, I'm not saying all gay people are straight and narrow and are, <laughs> no pun intended, are, you know, these these regular good people because there's evilism in everyone. But statistically, you know, we're breathing life into these children. There's a lot of broken nature in this world, not just saying in homes, but in the world, period. And there's a lot of lost ass kids. I think this is like 500,000 kids a year or something like that end up like going just missing, girl. Like just, just plain up missing, period. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, in more than half of those are probably kids that are born into poverty or who are homeless or who, you know, a lot of these parents are bold and they're leaving their kids at doorsteps or leaving them in forests and shit like that, child. It's weird. There's, I did a lot of research on this stuff and it's mind bothering. Human trafficking, sex trafficking, the Illuminati is uh, abducting motherfuckers and turning their ass into uh, big ass toddler dog babies and shit, underground girls, all type of freaky shit happening. That's another subject. <laughs> I was about to say, hold on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. It's the truth though. So it's just like if you're no it's about like you said earlier, the quality of life. Yeah. That should be the only thing that matters. As long as your child is loved, is is, is supported, is encouraged, and is just around nothing but the greatest energy possible and is <sighs> who else you want them around, baby? Who else who else you want them around? Those thugs, girl. Little boosie. You want them around them, girl? You want them experiencing hate? You want them to experience fear so early? You want to know why they become unproductive? You want to know why they're, they're, they flinch? You want to know why they're trauma fucking ties? Because you want them around that toxic. Remember that little video we talked about last season, that little boy in Georgia who was getting hit by the brother or whatever because he was, you know, running around here okay. snapping and twirling shit like that? Like, how dare y'all? Whatever happened to that? Did they, they took him out of the house? Yeah, I'm um, hope Giselle had got involved and had led a protest and had started a GoFundMe and got him removed from the home and they opened up an investigation. I don't know what came what became of the investigation, yeah. but um even with all of that happening to him, 
you know, gay, you know, this is how I know that gay people are divine because we just have the elasticity when it comes to our heart. Even mm-hmm. despite all of that abuse and rejection, that little boy still wanted to be nowhere else but home with his siblings and with his mom. That's all he knew. Yeah. But that's what happens too, though. We end up becoming a slave to something that's been normalized. He don't realize there's no, there's, there's, that's not, when you, being raised means you're absorbing experiences, right? So therefore you start translating those same experiences more than likely as you get older, how you have, how you build relationships, how you start a job, how you just do anything in this life, right? So when you breed that kind of level of normalization on some real negative ass slavery, impactful type shit, of course, it's all you want to do. You want to go home. You want to be right back to the very place that kind of makes you want to kill yourself, makes you want to hate yourself, makes you want to kind of going back into the previous conversation. You know, you you built up this tension and this resentment towards yourself based on the ideologies of raggedy motherfuckers who don't see it for you. So of course that self-hating mentality is bred. Of course, all of these doubts start to, you know, spread throughout your mind and your human experience because of people who are supposed to love you. And I do air quotes for a fucking reason, because girl, please, if you love me, you love everything about me, period. And this whole like, because you have a birth certificate, girl, that's not the papers for your child. That's not your property, girl. Once they come out that puss, it is your fucking job to raise them to the best of your abilities, girl, without no judgments casted, none of that shit. You should be loving them regardless. And if you know that you cannot do that, let someone else. I think that there's another layer to that too, OYB, to your point, is I think that two-spirited people are organically and naturally empathic. And so imagine that that little boy should be that all of us, despite all the things we've all gone through as queer people, we still love this world. We still love our neighbors. We're still hopeful about love and romance. Somehow the purity of our heart has survived the trauma mm-hmm. of the life experience. And I think that that's unique to queer people because historically, like I know what our perception is in the West of queer people, but if you look at other nations and indigenous uh, tribes approach to queerness, like we were revered as gatekeep- as gatekeepers of mask and feminine. There are plenty of nations pre- pre-colonialism, pre-European invasion, that revered two-spirited weddings and marriages as even more sacred than heterosexual unions. Um, There was this metaphysical understanding of what it meant to be two-spirited and queer. So I think that we're literally born with something special. I think that that's why queer people come into the world. And unfortunately, within the West and many other parts of the world, too, we just come into a very fucked up system that doesn't recognize that identity, that doesn't honor that identity, and oftentimes we end up being disposed of instead. But I think we're really here to be healers, to be a bridge to the world. I think that largely because most systems become either matriarchal or patriarchal, spirit sent two spirited people in to say, nah, baby, the truth is somewhere in between both of these consciousnesses because whenever there's one over the other, there's imbalance in the world. That's why we can't have a purely patriarchal system and we can't also have a purely matriarchal one either they both have to be married and unified and queer people can assist in that unification of that power structure amen my, my final thoughts on this particular topic are, are just this child if we all want to talk about love and unity and all this love is what saves the day in every situation we again the first thing we got to do is find out is the parenting that we're doing is how, is it effective is it positive because all of this, like, I'm going to beat you or I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Girl, please let that shit die the fuck out, honey. Like, y'all need to stop with that mentality. It's over with. It's been done, girl. And all you're doing is breeding a generation of self-hating, angry-ass children. Mm-hmm. And um, there's nothing wrong with LGBTQ members raising kids. I totally believe that there's a because we know what it's like to feel unloved, to be lonely, to feel lost, to, to have, and also, too, bitch, a lot of us had to walk this earth on our own. No one taught us nothing. So, and if you came out good and positive and well-balanced girl, and you're kind and you're compassionate and you are just the T overall, 
<laughs> Come on. Who did? Mm -hmm. I should be the, we should be the main ones around here raising children. Right. That's who I would want to raise my children. I think at the core of it all, we're all like that. I think what you just said proves a valid point. Like at the core of us, whether we have training, positive upbringing or not, we're all innately good. So if we just try to strip away the, the, the needle of control and, you know, trying to beat the head over somebody, then we would only exhibit love. I think mm -hmm. we should view, par parenting should be how love should be, mm -hmm. unconditional. Your parenting should be unconditional. You're a parent regardless. You love that child regardless. And you know, I have to slightly disagree with something you said earlier, YB, you don't have to love everything about them, but because I love you, mm -hmm. I automatically respect you. So if I don't like it, then I don't like it. You know, like if I have a child and he's straight and that's fine, but if he decides to gangbang, baby, I don't like that. Mm. I don't love that about you, but you're my son. So if you need me, I got you, period. Whereas I think now parenting has become conditional. Mm. If you, it's like the parent is trying to be the parent and the child. Like, give me what I want, but when you don't, I'm the parent and I'm going to roll with the iron fist. Mm. These are your children. Like, they are helpless individuals. Like, and every time we, we talk about parenting and how straight people do it better, it was straight people that killed Gabriel Fernandez. It's, every time there's a child going missing or found in the woods, straight people are involved. And as a matter of fact, they took Gabriel from a gay man. His uncle, you know. He was flourishing. Mm -hmm. Who so, was happy? He was happy and not abused. Alive. And alive. Yeah. alive. Yeah. But you yeah. see what they also try to put on people too. There was a darker end to that story as well. To get him out of the house, they were trying to put on wrong allegations on that man. And that's another thing too. Like people love to do, and it's just like, girl, please, like. Y'all need to get y'all shit together, honey, because if we want true unity... Equality, equal pedophilia. When did the two ever exist in the same universe? Because Ever. if we want to tell the truth, it's, it's not Tuesday, but let's tell the truth Tuesday, girl. History has proven, girl, that when the Romans and the Greeks were out here doing it, who and girl, it, <laughs> it was these so-called straight men, honey. Even now. Oh. The pattern of history. Up and even till now, girl. Pompeii's volcano was killing the kids and they was out here killing the kids, girl, please. But y'all want to put that on us. No, ma'am, Pam. Sorry. Anything to vilify us. Because we're mm -hmm. brothers. Anything to vilify us. I just want to add one more thing to that. I just want our parents to know that you're not God. You're, you are a parent. You are borrowing something that God gave to you. Keep that, humble yourself unto that. Gotta to prep for a future though. That's what kills me too. Going back to like, they are our future. Think about this as an adult. Everything that you hate about the world and the systems that are in place that kept you down and oppressed for your time in this life. Don't you want to train up your child so they don't have to experience the same fuck shit that you had to endure? Exactly. Don't want Hold them on. to go to school. Or do school. You got to define that. You you have to define that because even the abusive straight parents believe that that's exactly what they're doing. Training their child, they would have. But if if the way you would have them go is not be gay, is not be trans, is not be anything other than Christian, is to do something other than be the doctor that 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 is a part of the family's legacy, then there's issues. So. What does it truly mean to, because when I think of that scripture, I'm thinking that scripture has, the only way that scripture can make sense to me is if it's about principles. Raise your child to be loving, mm -hmm. to be self-aware, to be kind, to self-know, and to have the capacity for sacrifice. So uh, virtue. It was virtue. virtue. Not, not physical. And virtue. Not, not, yeah, not all yeah. that other egoic yeah. shit that we project onto children exactly and i think they you're, deserve supposed it. Kids. you're supposed to protect them that's why when you go to school they said who's this child parent or guardian you're supposed to protect these kids like and the fact that they are most abused when they're with you 
that speaks volumes. Child, we need to get it together. <clears throat> and again, like I'm saying, like I said, almost every episode, it ain't an issue until it's gay. But most of the issues that are in this world lie and come from and originate from heterosexual communities. So, is what it is, girl. I could a bang up job. Okay. Bang. Now, going on to the last topic for tonight, um, <clears throat> it's also about you know raising LGBTQ children. So today we are seeing a heavy influx of young people coming out as one of many letters of the community. But are most parents ready or even have the knowledge to properly support or even understand their kids? Let's talk about it. And I would like to give some advice at the end of our commentary um, for any parents that may be, you know, a parent of an LGBT youth and they may be struggling or, you know, I'm quite sure someone's going to see it, see this, whether they'll admit to what may be going on in their household or not. I still think it's a helpful tool. And I think we're all old enough in our experience to give that type of advice. So. Well, you want to give this episode to Logo, honey. This is such a Logo episode. I love it. <laughs> I live for it. I just think it's important that we have these kinds of conversations, man. I think, you know, it's 2022. This generation, like I said in, in the opening of this topic, like we're seeing a heavy influx of kids that are just living in their divine truth. And I don't think a lot of these parents, because think about these parents are like our age. Mm -hmm. And imagine our generation coming up. We're all openly gay men here, but that experience for us. So there, obviously there's probably more straight men from our time period than there is of our community. So I can only imagine their fucked up way of parenting their LG, LGBT child. You know what I'm saying? Selfish. It's very selfish because the moment a child comes home and says, mom and dad, I'm gay. The first thing they think, fuck the child. What are my friends and family going to think? What did the Bible have to say? They don't even think about it. They think about their public reputation. What is Lakeisha and the crew down to the club and down to the job going to say about me because my child is gay? I mean, ultimately, I feel like that is a... Uh, that is a... a in, their, in their world, it is a warranted response because it automatically puts responsibility on them of what they did wrong, if they want to call it that. But it's more so like, you know, what kind of parent am I? Or what kind of parent am I going to have to be going forward? What will my child have to endure? And how will I be able to deal with this? You know, it, it does have to require some kind of, I, I'm not going to say it, it requires that type of self-reflection, but it does require some type of self-reflection of, you know, how am, how am I going to parent a child who, you know, is now coming to me in this, I, I in this fashion? I think that's something they shouldn't think about. I'm just yeah. saying that should be, let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. I want the child to feel secure. Like for me, like I'm gay. I don't know how I would handle sitting with my husband watching Family Feud or something that my child tell me they want to be transgender. I'm going to first be like, okay, sit down. Let's talk about it. Boom. Well, Boom. I know me personally. First, I like, would, the first thing I would think is, oh, hell. <laughs> well, see, no, I would think that, but I, my, my, in my mind, I'm like, secure the child. I want you to feel as safe as possible. Now, once we get you to bed, I'm in the shower crying because, bitch, I... I don't know what to do. You know, I mean, my husband's gonna have to. But talk that, to then them thoughts might come. I mean, so you, you that's what I'm like, saying. What I'm, I, what okay with, I'm okay with them having thoughts, but let that not be your initial thought. Your child and their safety and right. their well being, how they're feeling and how they're handling this should be your primary thought. Fuck me, I'll get to me later. You come first. But at the same time, like you said, we can't give them the same grace. Like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna play devil's advocate because yeah. you know I just, I just can. But like they're not God. So yeah. they're not benevolent creatures. So they do have human responses and human. So the first thing that might come to your mind not, might not be the first, like the right thing. I it mean, might be something else. It might be something that you don't want to be the first thing to come. It might be a reaction. So if you heard something that you didn't like, and we can take that to any like level of conversation when it comes to something that you're uncomfortable with, like uh, like your husband coming to tell you that you're cheating. Like they they cheating or whatever the case may be. You're like, oh, what are my friends gonna think? That's like that's the last yeah. thing you should be thinking about. Who all like, knows? Everybody knows. 
Am I the last to find out? I get it. I get it. Like, what am I going to do? Like, do who else knows? Like, how, how did I not see this? And it's kind of like, yeah. you know, these questions could come up and these things could happen. And it might come out of your mouth. The first thing that might come out of your mouth. You might not mean it, you yeah. know, in that moment. Because my mom did that to me. So I can I can give you a little bit of like, yeah. my mom was like, oh, my, what are my friends going to say? Or what are my coworkers going to say? Because I have a gay coworker and they talk about him. And now I, you're one of them. And it's like, yeah damn like this is not the guy can't be the first thing that comes out of your your mouth like i didn't raise you this way i'm like well how did you raise me i don't know so it can happen it can be the worst thing and she apologized later but it's kind of like you were just doing the best she could yeah you got to give them like some kind of grace because it might be the first initial wrong thing but it might be the thing that they want to express to you like you said they're human and they're like children them damn selves when you tell them something so you got to be your own adult sometimes you making a grown decision or you're making an adult decision for yourself and for your life you're telling somebody who's also grown or whatever the case may be not even not to say that children who are like 14 15 are grown but like if you're making a, a statement like that you do have to take some kind of responsibility of hey i'm, I'm expressing myself and you know i hope and pray that my parent will understand. But if they don't, I have to be okay. And I would hope that going forward, people will start to express that with their children. Like, if you tell me something I don't like, I want you to be, you know, steadfast in what you say, confident, no matter what anybody says, no matter what I say, because I'll come around eventually. But if I say yeah. something to you, just know that I'm saying it for me and not against you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just to get the feelings out and so that they can actually have a real conversation. But after y'all had that moment though, Shamel, did your mom make a conscious effort to respect? You know? Absolutely not. It took a while. Okay. It took a while. It took her like a while. It was like it was very damaging. It could be, you know, it 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 I should go to therapy about it, but I didn't. You know what I'm saying? It was like you have, time. That was, you have time. I have time, but the initial conversation was that you know, like, what will my friends say or what will my coworkers say? And then it was just like, you have to change for me. The pressure came, mm -hmm. and then it was the, you know, I gotta turn you the right way. I gotta make this right. We gotta do. We gotta do this, and we gotta do that. And I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do. And it, then it turned into you know, trying to lock me in the house and keep the gay in. It was like, so I had to. I had to grow up like I was 19 when it happened. So I had to move out. I had to move out for a little while. I had to find my own way. And then within that moving out, I, she began to respect me because she knew that I was serious. She knew that, you know, she would lose me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that triggered something inside of her to make her want to understand more. So then when we started talking again, she started to, you know, of course she apologized. And then now our relationship is great. She loved my nigga. You know, she Amen. she see him all the time, and she, you know, we're That's we're crazy. good. So it oh. just takes time for some people. Some people are not initially going to get it. It's not going to be like that for everybody. And I just had to under I had to learn the hard way that you know I had one of those parents. I didn't even know. I thought my mom would be cool. I thought she would be like, oh, you know, I knew and all this other stuff and blah blah blah. It was like a complete. 180 from what I thought it was going to be. It was the worst experience that I ever thought it could be. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, I just had to learn to deal with it. So, but kudos to you though, because I, yeah. I, I applaud you for having the courage to stand up for yourself, to set a healthy boundary with your mom, but also like extend enough love to her to leave that relationship open for repair, you know, because you right. didn't have to do it. You could have been like, you know what, well, girl, you, you blew it, you know. But, you know, to have a heart that, and that speaks to our level of parenting, you know, we have yeah. no love. Um, and I think I had to teach her a little level. I had to do some parenting of my own of her, you know boundaries. what I'm saying? So boundaries. it's boundaries. also setting boundaries of my own. Yeah, like if I know and then being respectful. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying that to other people, but in, in my relationship, I found that what worked was not talking about it for so long. Like just living my life, keeping it to myself and not really expressing it with her just to give her opportunity to, you know, breathe and see that I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm moving the way I need to move. I I'm, just still me. I'm still me. I'm yeah, still Yeah, I'm still me. I'm still, yeah. I mean, I was, I was starting to flourish. I was starting to do things the way I needed to do. And I was, you know, I got a better job, got better, you know, more money. I was taking care of myself and she just saw me as the you know type of person that I always wanted to be, and that's just somebody who's independent, and not just somebody who's oh that's my gay son. I'm 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 Tramel. I'm I'm me. Yeah. And one thing she did tell me now she did catch me one time.
because I was crying over my ex at the time and I and I was trying to hide it because I didn't I never talked to her about it. I never talked to her. She never really knew that I had a boyfriend at the time. And she came into my room and this is the first time that we actually talked about a man and it was kind of like, oh, what's going on with you? There's something wrong with you. I'm like, no, there's nothing wrong with me because I didn't want to talk about it with her. It was kind of like, uh, yeah, well, I want you to know that, you know, we can talk about it. It wasn't that guy that you, you're you talking to somebody. I'm like, yeah, it's just, I don't think it's going to work out. She's like, well, you're a good person. You're a great this, you're great at that. And you're such a, you know, don't worry about it. And, you know, he would be lucky to have somebody like you. And that was like everything to me. That meant the world to me. And she also gave me the best piece of advice. It's like, if he broke, he not the one for you because gay people are not broke. <laughs> We're not broke people. Well, we're not bro. bums. We the got money. We don't be sad. We have no, you cars. have poor money. Man. Said, I've never said she's never a gay person not unhappy or broke or poor. So you just keep doing better for yourself. Remember those statistics, you Why, right baby. Person. Remember those statistics, Bo. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So tea. when what I was know. saying, my mama already knew. That was back <laughs> when I was, how old was I? I was 22 when that happened. So I definitely want to, uh, to speak to that, but to Ray's point, I'm going to miss seeing Tramel on TV. No, you're not, because he's right here on YB Entertainment <laughs> TV. Like, okay, get it away. Yeah. Get away. But yeah. to uh, to Cat's point, this is why, because parents are also human, this is why motherfuckers need to understand parenting is an art form. Because right. you are human. That's why this shit needs to be an intentional practice. And you need to cultivate and unpack this shit before you give life to another person. Because with the whole raising LGBT kids thing, like, I keep forgetting, like, when when they're talking, when everybody's talking, I know what the fuck, I'm, I know what exactly what I want to say. When it's time to say it, I go flat. I, there was, it was good too. We we're talking about parents, right? And queerness, <laughs> and you were talking about Cat's point. origin story and shit. His mother mm -hmm. is Mystique. Gambic was acting a fucking plum fool. What is going on? S stimulate my thought, Tramel. Keep talking. Like keep you going. said, you were saying you was about to expel on what Cat had said earlier about you know. People being human, parents being human, it's an art form. Yeah, yeah I, it, it, it's, it's kind of coming back to me. But w what I will say is that I believe that people should only have children when they become lucid. I believe that parenting should only happen when you as a human being have become clear and free. Like only free people should be having fucking children. If you insecure, traumatized as fuck, addicted, you know you got a plethora of fuck shit going on. You barely understand the fucking world. Obviously, you want to shape your child in all of this fucking confusion and raggediness and all of this, like, EBT psychology, girl. So we got to, like, unpack all of this, and we've got to become clear as humans. Like, for me, my brother, he just gave birth to my niece, Honesty, who's three weeks old, and I am, like, overjoyed. And she's Hold a on. bitch. She's mine. Hold on. Your brother gave birth? Yes. Oh, okay. The divine feminine came through in the divine masculine, baby. Gave birth, honey. It took two to take. I'm going to give him that, too. It took two to take, honey. When he ejaculated, birth was given. Okay? He had to give up some. She came out of him. She was cultivated in her, but she came oh. out of him. I don't know why we take the men out of this as if women out here just, like, having immaculate conceptions yeah. and like, can I say something real quick? Well, I don't we kids. Can I say something real quick? Just like the point that you made about people being lucid when they have children. I think it's it's something um, very powerful in the in the science of it all of having children, where people are told that their best childbearing ages for women are before they are what thirty one or thirty two or something like that. Like. Who knows who you, women really don't know who they are in the years where they're supposed to have children, which is in their twenties, right? So there are a lot of children raising children, like and especially with the world that we live in today, like the twenty threes, the twenty fours, twenty five. Those are the people who are having these babies. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You got grandmothers who are like thirty five. You know what I'm saying? Like these are children having children. So who are the who are really 
they're not really the best people to, you know, have kids because they don't know themselves. They are the most unsure people that you ever want to meet. Like, that's my but problem. it's all in science, and that's what's being perpetuated. Like, well, we grown people aren't that. having kids anymore. Well, we like, heterosexual. That's my point. We need to eliminate that. Like, I don't give a yeah. damn if it takes you to be Janet Jackson's age at fifty to give birth. Lightweight. But then that comes with complications that they well, tell you. That's, you know. Okay, well, I would rather you have complications during conceiving than your child to come out fucked up and complicate. But like, they like, might come like, out with problems if you know, well, like well, autism also, is a thing, Down and, syndrome. You know, I understand all that, but that's also not happening thanks to technology and yes, is. which is yeah. why women are successfully having. Um, in vitro, like they're going through all of these things. There are amazing medical advancements. If they have the money. Women. Well, okay. So, see, well, see, you are proving my point. Don't have if you if you can't if you don't got the money, don't have the child. It, like I'm saying, use all of that as your excuse to not fucking bring the child. Into but the there world. are a bunch of horny it, people out here that want to do it wrong. Condoms, see, condoms. it's the wrongness of it all. Strap the wrongness, up. and yeah, they, ain't got, like, they ain't trying to do that birth control, baby. But you know what, Hermit? Hermit made a, a good point. She said, best age for having babies is late 20s for women. I had my son at 40. I'm wiser, but don't have the energy of a 20-something that helps when you are keeping up with a toddler. Imagine when your kid is 16 years old and he's in football or he's involved in sports or just anything like that. Imagine, you know, when they, they get more energy as they get to those later teen years. I so can it. I, I, I didn't have the energy I, at 30. I housed two of my nephews and my little one-year-old niece, and I was like, when are you coming to get they little bad asses? And they're not even bad. They're just active kids. But I'm just, my nerves is bad. But then again, I was, <laughs> I, my nerves were bad, girl. Like, I was, like, trying to catch everybody. It just was not working. I just, but then again, it was a strong pivot. You know, I'm living as a single man by myself to having three kids in my home for a weekend. So I guess when you're not used to it, it's different. I do have this question, though. So, I understand, I, I can only imagine, because I'm not a woman, that it's only proper to want the actual life-giving experience, right? But so I asked the question is, with all of these needy-ass kids in the world, I didn't mean to say it that way, but you know what I meant. Like, all of these kids that are of that are in need in this world, let me rephrase that. They're like, oh, you fucking bitch, you know? <laughs> I feel like you could choose now. A lot of people, because of people that are having kids young and, and they don't want to have abortions or they, they are voluntarily trying to put their children up for adoption. I think it's even a more viable thing. Live your life, your twenties, thirties, figure it out. And then when you're 40, 50 years old, 60 years old, you can always adopt girl, pick your poison. I don't want no little well, kids at 60. I'm just saying though, you got those girls who, you know, are weird and just want kids in their sixties. Well, they whatever. don't, um, well, they don't, I think, they don't, uh, I don't know, I was watching the show and it might not be the truth, but the lady was like, you know, it's kind of hard to adopt when you're of a certain type of age because they don't think that you're probably fit to like raise the child. They don't think like, you're gonna live long enough to see the child. Yeah, raise. you might not be fit to okay, raise but we the just child in that, that, like, you're okay, in that first age. But you're in your thirties, okay. I, but if you're well to do, child, they're trying to get these kids off like old rice krispie treats from the public stand, the shelves, child. Trust and believe, buddy. But then you have to think about many the, the children who are having these kids. Like, if I was, if I, I can say for me, if I was like 22 years old or 21 and I was having a baby, or if I was pregnant and I ain't having an abortion, and I was like, oh, well, I can do an adoption. But then when you actually have that baby in your hand, you're like, do you really want to give your baby to somebody else to raise, like? You're looking like you can't. Like I might not be able to do that, even if you know you're not the most fit to do it. You don't want anybody else to do it because you don't want, you know. Then you don't love your child because it should come yes. down to whether you're fit. That's being selfish. It really is. You gonna take them home yeah. to? I was just saying it, yes. mm -mm, I don't want to say it, but you gonna take them home to girlfriend or sister? Is my son gonna sell us today? <laughs> Listen, I might precious the situation. Like, yeah. come on home to me and my bad mother. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch running with a bucket of chicken, baby. <laughs> Shout out to Precious, girl. Yeah. Precious. Precious did what she did her big one and took care of her babies. Honey. Not her big one. <laughs> <laughs> girl, 
bucket that dude. Don't get canceled. Y'all ain't gonna be had no pressure. She she worked hard for that piece of that bucket of chicken, baby. You just blurted it. I said she uh, ran some. Didn't that? Did somebody get her in the back of the head and make her pass out or something like that? Uh huh. She just threw it up. <laughs> <laughs> We, she oh, said, she, she said, my baby called Mongo. What a small chance. He said, it's short for Mongo. <laughs> <laughs> my baby named Mongo. Yeah. <laughs> the, my mama made me name her Mongo. In the words of, um, uh, what's that girl named who City Girls? Miami. Yes, honey. Bueno, snow jazz. Put it that with bueno, snow jazz, yeah, honey. Okay. Shout out to Mexico. Thank you so much. Yes. I wanted to say to Hermit uh, TV's point that what she's talking about in 20s is like, yes, like women physiologically are in the best condition of their life. But you can be in shape and a bad bitch and have all your vitals up and still be a low vibrating, dingy, traumatized ass bitch at 20. So I'm still arguing the point that <laughs> it has to come down to lucidity, baby. I'd rather my mama be 60 yeah. and raising my ass than to be 20 and fucked up in her mind, fucked up in her worldview, fucked up in her emotions, but fit enough to have me at 21. Like I prefer that. And I think that grandparents are an awesome example of having a lack of mobility, but still being able to provide infrastructure, love, <laughs> and completeness to children. I'm sorry. 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 What? None of they lacking mobility, baby. Grandparents, no, they are not like our grandparents. They can walk. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I'm like, because I actually see like grandparents who, well, then again, I, I feel you too, though, because there, there's some of those out there as well. I'm just saying, you know, like, obviously, your grandparents do not have the same level of functionality that your 20 year old no. parents yeah. do, you know? So, I mean, but so I'm saying that. But do you, but let me ask this question, though. And, and when we're talking about the character building process for your child, would you rather someone who's full of mobility or someone who actually has the life experiences and the wisdom to say, hey, bitch? Because I find myself even talking to my nieces and nephews like, please don't fuck up the way I fuck. Please don't make these mistakes. Because I learned something. A 21-year-old mother wouldn't know how to properly guide her child through this world. That's why I don't want her ass having me or my nieces or my nephews or my cousins. How old was your mom when she had you? Oh, I think it's about the perspective yeah. of how they choose. All of y'all. How, how old were your parents? Well, you had me at 26, I think. I think my mom was like in her late 20s, like 28, I believe, maybe 30. Um, I don't know. My mom and dad were 33 when they had me. I, I should have been born sooner, but they had literal three miscarriages before me. My mom mm. was 23. Mm. I have a friend who is like in her 20s and she has like a five-year-old and she is parenting phenomenally. Now she is a teacher at one of those like conscious learning schools, you know, so they're little and she, you know, implement those practices to her child. But her teach her parenting is exquisite. And she has a co-parenting situation with the baby's father. Exquisite. But that that's a catch twenty two. You're not always going to get that. With, with Absolutely, because I'm looking at my sister. My sister was twenty one when she had my niece, and I, and I tell you, I be wanting to choke the hell out of her sometimes. I'm like, girl. <laughs> but I love Hermit's uh, follow up that she agrees. Her mom had her brother when she was twenty, but she had Hermit when she was thirty, and her mom was more together when she had Hermit, and it shows with how yeah. her and her brother moved through life. That's what I would, but the thing is, like, it can be like in the reverse. Like my mom had me when she was 23 and then she had my sister when she was 31, 31, 32. And like, my sister's crazy. My, Chris, my sister's crazy as hell. She's like, she's like yeah, on the other side of crazy. But you've also been on all three seasons of G-Status. Huh? I was the youngest of three you, boys. You've you also been on all three seasons of G-Status. Yes, and I was the most calm and collected one. Girl, we only saw that. one and a half of that, girl. We only Please. saw okay. I know this full of stuff. We only saw one and a half of that. But yeah, well, I, see, least, I see both sides telling you the rest. I was the youngest of three boys, and my mom, at least someone is. <laughs> mom, she did like 
<laughs> I said shit with my brothers, but she wouldn't do that shit with me because she was in her thirties when I was coming up. So she was like, I'm not doing that shit. All of the sports stuff I couldn't do that my brothers did because she didn't have the energy for it. Right. So mm-hmm. I was in stuff like therapy and gymnastics and shit, whether my brothers were boy scouts and got to do things that I couldn't do. So, I mean, but then again, she was more together because she was a lot more lenient with me. And my brothers would be like, you used to beat our ass or shit like that. And I would, you know, get away with so much. But then yeah, again, my, my sister was the same. Like she got a lot of investments as far as like my, my mom went to like put her into sports. She put her into all of these things, you know, that my sister did, but she didn't really like want to flourish. And I mean, you know, my sister just got wayward. I don't know for whatever reason, but she's, she got, she just had another baby last month. Oh, yes. You know, uh, Uncle Tremel. God. Uncle Tremel in the building. Yeah, I'm Uncle Tremel two times. Boop, boop, boop. And two aunties. Wait, it's three aunties in the building. Uh, no, is everybody no, I'm an uncle. I'm an auntie. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Definitely. You I know. Have, oh, Lord. One, two, three. I think seven or eight nieces and nephews. Oh, I couldn't. Mm-hmm. I have so many. My brother was, God rest his soul, before he left out of here, he made sure he left his legacy. Oh, he went out with a man. It was a couple bags. It was a couple of bags. It was bang after bang after fucking bang. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do. I want to go out in a blaze of glory. You want to go out in a blaze of glory? Well, start with that. Uh, that lady that squirted all over your face. Start. Start. I'm up. I'm leaving the trail, honey. Like everything. I every day I live my life with one mentality. I'm living in my last days. What the hell does the, what type of craziness does today need to look like for me? Like my what, the, what was today crazy. crazy like? I rested because it's been seven days. It's been six days of pure sin for me. So I rest. I'm resting on the seventh day. And so what was what was yesterday you know, like? Oh, that's all over YouTube, honey. Go check out that Storm and Road interview. You'll see, mm-hmm. what, yeah, and go check out. It, it, it's yeah, it's all behind now. Yes, yeah, it's been living. Oh, right. I want to yes. argue. I want to argue. What I I really want to stress this parent, or like this grandparents part. The reason why most of us love our grandparents honestly more than our biological parents is because they really are our parents' like higher selves. And the reason why kids end up loving their grandparents a little bit more than they love their actual parents and the reason why parents oftentimes envy their parents who make better grandparents than they did make direct parents is because those grandparents have already been through this experience they have seen everything they did wrong they've been able to make assessments and see turnouts and see this so by the time their grandkids come into play they know exactly what to give and what not to give and we, a lot of us had parents who were in their prime when they had us. And yet we still wanted to go over to um, to grandma's house for the summer with her old immobilized ass. We didn't give a damn that she couldn't run around with us in the front yard, honey. Like it was the energy and the spirit and the love and just the essence of our grandparents that we enjoyed, the personality. It don't take all that ripping and fucking running. And guess what? Thank God to technology. Even if I'm old as fuck, but old as fuck by the time I have my child. You're at your face. You're at your football game, right? That's why we got FaceTime, bitch. I'll FaceTime me the game, girl. I'm still there, front row, honey. Like, have some, put the tripod up and show me what it gives. I'm still trying. I hope to be old as hell and rich as hell at the same time because fuck the FaceTime, girl. You just get me an old nasty um, hover around bitch that can. Bitch, when I say I'm going to come in that bitch thing. with hover around with rams on it, bitch. Blasting I'm pulling it. up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm put, uh, you don't sit baby in the corner bitch I'm coming hey, and you better have them hot sausages ready at the concession stand with the pickle legs so I can smash them together and eat it through the damn plastic thank you Jesus and I will have my black and mild wine with wood tip mm. Ooh. I need one so bad right now <sighs> y'all notice baby. I'm not smoking right y'all know I quit smoking I'm trying to quit smoking Amen. I have not Amen. smoked not one cigarette throughout Amen. this whole live stream that's why I'm like, I'm ready to fucking kill everyone. Right Let me just say, honey, uh, you're slimming down, sis. 
I I better. I've been working like a fucking military sergeant in the gym. So. Are you using the patch? Are you having any help with the rift draw? No. Cold turkey. Cold turkey. Well, my nephew is the driving force behind that. Mm, he's he's okay. using it against me. Well, don't make promises you can't keep. So he made me feel really bad. I'm the child is parenting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he really made me feel bad about that shit. So I'm trying my best. Now, I'm not going to lie. I slipped up. You feel me? But that's I'm bound to happen. Okay. Mama got to have but, a you know. And I was honest with him and let him know that I did. Amen. Amen. So. But I think that's still a step in the right direction, even if you like you're weaning yourself off. Mm -hmm. You know, so shout out to you. That's amazing. I'm trying, honey. It's every day is a that's why y'all don't see many car conversations because all of them are filled with me cussing motherfuckers out and waving my gun at every bitch that I see because I'm so I'm, I'm trying to come down from the nicotine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, you feel me? You so black now. You put in all that sobriety. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I, I want to put a disclaimer out there. Beware, bitch. PTO, prepare the others. Because if y'all <laughs> catch me, they say it takes 21 days to, for the mind to kick a habit. And if in 21 days, are, if I'm still here in 21 days, you know it worked. If I'm not, that means I'm locked up. They won't let me out. Yeah, I got your bail money. <laughs> Period, honey. Thank you so much. Hello, God. Will you buy me a pack of cigarettes? Just yes. Send it through. Uh, send it through the mail, girl. I throw it over the fence. Send it the mail. Hey, I'm gonna be waiting on the other side to stomp them bitches as soon as they hit the ground. All right, so let's wrap this episode up, y'all. Um, all in all, I just want to say again, like I said, Lord, love is love. Treat people how you want to be treated and really live by that shit. Like, that should be the cornerstone, the foundation for any type of parenting, mentorship, whatever the fuck you're doing with the kid's child. You know what I'm saying? L don't be taking out all your stresses, all your past, all your fears on the kids of today. This is a different time period. We got to take recognition of that as well. And that's where we... Anybody have any last thoughts on, you know, the things that we discussed before I move into the... Hey, quote? Hey, because, he not sober. Uh, he just not smoking cigarettes. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. Mm -mm. No. Thank you. Lee. Um, I just want to talk back to what I said. Parenting and love should both be unconditional. If that was the case, we wouldn't be having a conversation. Thank you. Yep. I Anyone agree. In? I concur. Giving Thank grace you. to the to the parents, just you know, giving them understanding, just like we want understanding at the end of the day. You know, they can't if they fall short a little bit, but then they pick it up somewhere else, you know, just giving them a cute little thank you, you mm -hmm. know, whenever it, you can. But if you just can't bend on some things, then don't. And I, I, I totally respect, you know, all that. Love is love. I agree with the grace. Because, I mean, we're not horrible people, but I'm sure none of us were easy to parent. You know, we all had issues. I wouldn't know. You know we sure. all had, you know, phases in our lives where our parents <laughs> didn't get the chance. My <laughs> didn't get the fucking chance. You know, my at least my situation. I'm laughing about it because it's funny as hell now when you think about it in retrospect. At least for me, but didn't even give it a chance to even know what you could do. Yeah, that's the driving force of crack, girl. Please, I said, look, there was no way that my parents could have even prepared for me. You have to be another. You have to be another type of motherfucker to have even properly parented me. So I had to parent myself, but to cat's point once i got older i have a lot I, ha I held a lot of resentment toward my mother growing up but then i looked back and realized that she's a broken bitch too and it's okay like she don't get a blueprint she don't get a bible she don't get no like exact manual on how to do this shit she human she got her own trauma she got her own ignorances and so removing that personally from me was able to savage what was left of me and her relationship when i was able to realize none of this shit was personal you just know kind of what you're doing, kind of not what you're doing, and figuring everything else out in the middle, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean everything is forgivable. Hello. That I guess I, I want to say real quick. Someone in the chat, um, Baby Bay, hello. Welcome to the platform. Thank you for supporting, um, Boo. I appreciate it. Um, she says, yes, because parenting is not easy. And just what Conscious was saying, I get that. And I guess when you break down everyone's individual experience, I guess, yes, we could all say that, right? But it's something I saw today that Ellen DeGeneres was talking about. I don't know why she was talking about it, but I posted it on my story. And it's just like 
being good is something I believe that innately lives in everyone. You know, like I said earlier, you know what, even if you don't know the words or how to communicate, you know what it feels like. Amen. You know what it feels like. Every experience you ever had, you know what it may, how it made you feel. You won't remember the things people say, right? What did a uh, homegirl say, child? May she rest in peace, child. But you will remember how people and it, things made you feel. Mm hmm that is your cornerstone girl that is the foundation for starting to being a parent if yeah. you know that your child is living is in a situation that you know for yourself it doesn't feel good why apply that to them why raise them in that environment why teach them the things that you said that you know in your mind Turned you into a fucking bitch. And that may be another reason. That why made you want to rip your hair out when your parents or, or whoever was raising you at the time made you feel some type of way. You know how not to make your child feel. So if you can do that and do that successfully, then parenting can be easy. Oh, it's not going to be easy regardless, whether you learn, know how to treat them or not. Like you don't get a manual, so it's not going to be easy. But I think it speaks to why grandparents yeah. are nurturing because. A lot of times you sit back and you watch how you parented them by how they're parenting your grandbabies. And it's like, damn, like, woo, like if you doing that to my two year old grandbaby, was I knocking your ass around like that? Like, and sometimes it'll, you know, check them. Mm. But I do agree that there's no manual to this thing, you know, there to life period. Like there's ups and downs, there's mistakes. And as long as you're learning and you're growing from the experiences, that's all that matters. But you got a lot of people that are still stuck in this revolving perpetual door of fuck shit. And it just never ends for them particularly. So I just want people to know, girl, you have to do a lot of work. We all got to do a lot of work that working is never done. It's everything is a forever type of process. Even when you're done, girl, even when your spirit says, girl, we've had enough and you've gone on to wherever your ass is going to be. Most likely some of you whores will end up in hell. That's neither for me to, to whoop. <laughs> I judge you on girl it just is what it is honey um have a lot of water while you're alive bitch <laughs> period you better go down there yeah, on the ice bitch i'm just saying though girl y'all love your sodas and stuff girl girl please that's, that's the it's fall like it's like they're human i understand they don't they don't comprehend on the same level but they're human so it, it's okay to just be like you know what daddy's frustrated today baby you know just i'm sorry i don't mean to snap at you but just give me a minute like you know just talk to them you know because a lot of times if you dictate and it's like this is not a dictatorship you know you don't like like consciousness was saying you don't own me i'm not your property like so you don't have to you are giving the you pleasure you, you are giving me. the fortunate pleasure of molding the literal next generation of this life when you are dead and gone, won't well, you want to know that you left behind someone who has the potential to run for Congress or president or just become a, some type of changer and influencer in this world, girl? Don't you want to say that you're leaving behind something that you're proud of, girl? Mm -hmm. Some people don't. It is. Yeah. And that's the fucking problem. Some and that's why there's a lot of work that needs to be done, miserable. Miserable. done especially in the black really community. don't even like their children. They don't want to have kids really because don't. they think babies are cute. They think being pregnant and a toddler is cute. Yeah. Once that child is four, it's like, girl, it's not it's not fun no more. I'm bored. Here you go, grandma. Here, Here you go, go, grandma. Some people really legit don't want to see their children do better than them in life. All the bitches. There are some people like that. Children. All the bitches should not be having children. There are some people who are just like, I want you to be just a little bit up under me. To where I can control you enough to use you when I need to use you. But That's what I'm saying. Some people really don't like their kids. Some people were, are having children and they really want their children to like not fail, but just don't do better than me. Don't be better at life than me. Don't jealous succeed higher than I wanted to. Some people are narcissistic like that and have kids and just like, I don't want my child to be better than me. My dad is one of those, a little bit. You hit the nail on the head. This Damn. is definitely that's what you said. It's definitely going to be a clip in the fortune cookie of life, child. Hello, God. Um, I, very profound. And I hope a lot. Of, can you please repeat that just real quick for the people <laughs> in the back? There are some people in life who have children, and when they see their child, they see their child as a clean slate as somebody who has every opportunity afforded to them that they probably did not have. And they do not want that child to succeed higher than what they feel like they were able. They feel like they're stuck and they don't want their child to succeed higher than them. Damn. That it, it's more like a, a like 
you are doing better at life than me and I don't I really can't take that. You you had every opportunity more so than me and I don't want you to actually be able to take those things because I wasn't afforded those things. I wanted to live my life the way I wanted to live my life and you have that opportunity and I wish that I was you. Child. It's more like a jealousy type of thing. It's Some people are jealous child. of their it's children. A broken child. You need yeah. to heal that. You need to heal that. Some people are even jealous of their children just because their grandparents are like treating them better than like, like oh, my, my mother's treating you better than she treated me. Like mm -hmm. they're the, like there's some Thank people God, who literally have children who are like <laughs> resemblance of their siblings. Like mm -hmm. you're like my brother and sister and my mom is treating you better than, you're my right. child. Some That's people are like that. Some people who are jealous of the way their children are loved. Yeah. It's not even, you know, the materialistic things. Like people love you. Yeah, I, I I never felt seen. So fuck you. And it's just like, yeah. that's why I feel like you know there are people. I ain't gonna call no names, but there's some famous people. Have, when I wasn't there's anything. some famous people, you know, talking about this thing like who's like. I feel like she's kind of jealous of Black China a little bit. It's kind of like it's it's kind of weird. <laughs> she is. Yeah. She is. I can't see how you could treat your child like that and talk to your daughter like that. It's like there's some jealousy there. It's weird. I mean, there are people out there like that that, that have those types of interactions. You know, I want to say this too um, to parenting. I know that we put a lot of emphasis on parents like wanting to see their children do good. More importantly than anything as a parent, please make sure that you celebrate and affirm your. <laughs> what? What? Why? Why are you tripping over? Hey, Jeff. what are you tripping over? Oh, share it. What? what? No, it's <laughs> no, it's. I have this running ever since cast me. I started saying this mess. They're gonna sell me today. Like <laughs> I have some really dark humor in my mind when I said that. Went to like as we're talking about like kids who like feel broken or lost or whatever. I'm just thinking in my head like you know how the Boondocks will have like a skit, and I'm just thinking I'm just seeing in my head like a kid shivering in the cold saying, "Is a mess. They're gonna sell us today." <laughs> I'm sorry, like girls, some like hold out on the is. It's like a comedic version of Antoine Fisher. Girl, gonna like, sell us today. You gotta hold out the is. Go oh, ahead, Carlos. I just want to say, more importantly, as parents, please affirm. Don't just celebrate your children making an honor roll and going to college and making choices you deem right. You need to affirm them when you see that they also know who the fuck they are. You need to say, bitch, I'm, pr you are, I'm proud of you for marching to... Celebrate them when you see them being an individual. Celebrate them when you see them being able to march to the beat of their own drum and not have to do what the other kids do and not have to dress and not need those things. Affirm their character. Affirm the identity that, that really matters because at the end of the day, I don't plan on making my family happy in any of that regard, bitch. I'm a wild hoe, and and, and I'm a and I'm a free bitch. And if they're gonna be proud of me, that's what they're gonna have to be proud of. I'm not here to be a goddamn doctor, a scientist, a lawyer, nothing prestigious. I'm here to be a crazy, artistic, free spirited, open minded, but drag your motherfucking ponytail off your head as kind of a bitch. And I have the heart of gold, but I have the energy of a goddamn dragon. And if my parents would have been with that program, if they would have been like, like when I first started wearing hair, if my mom just would have been like, I love that you don't give a fuck, that would have just been transformative for me. If I would have been gay, whatever it was, if she would have celebrated that shit on my dad, like that just would have hit so powerfully in the in my evolution, but it wasn't there, but I still got it and I'm here and that's exactly what I'm gonna give to my niece and I'm gonna give to my children and um, I'm looking forward to it. So parents, make sure that you celebrate the non-physical traits of your child too, not just the physical shit they accomplished. Some people are not here to accomplish all of that. Some people are not here to be Dr. King to the fucking nation. It's enough that they are just great people. It's enough that they're just honest people. It's enough that they're just living their dreams and not focused on money but just focused on happiness and passion like it's okay like that is what success truly is i'd rather give birth to a child who can die happy because they achieved being themselves not because they had a bunch of plaques on the fucking wall and lived in a mansion 
and blah, 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 blah. It means nothing. But you're going to be reincarnating right over again to get the focus right. It was never all that earthly shit. It was here to recognize something much deeper about your existence. So do better. And also, too, I would like uh, people to understand, too, that um, also love the people around you who are going to breathe nothing but life, positivity, and, and great things into your child because it, it, it does take a village to raise kids. And sometimes you don't, you'll never really think who's going to be part of that village until until something ends up happening, right? You feel what I mean? Like, I really do believe that. So love and respect everyone and just surround your kid with the best positive energy that you possibly can. And I guarantee you, you will have nothing to worry about. Surround yourself with that energy because rarely do you see a parent who is progressive and is loving on their kids with toxic people around them. So if you surround yourself with positivity, that will exude off into your kids because even when they're not in your presence, they are still around love, you know? So And also, too, I want y'all to take this away as well just because because one of the things I hated at a, at a young age, I kept hearing was stay in a child's place, stay in a child's place. And my remark was, as I got older, if I would have done that, I probably would have been a dumb bitch by now. You know why I'm so smart? You know why I'm so opinionated? You know why I stand in my own shit? Do you know why I am so strong and who the fuck I am as an individual? Is because I didn't stay around children. I stayed up grown folks. I learned a lot. And yes, it, there can be instances where kids end up absorbing the wrong kind of information from grown folks. But I think kids too innately know what is positive and what what's considered negative. They know what's right and what's wrong. So, but I'll say that with saying, and you need to validate your child as an individual and not invalidate their experiences. Because just you're grown, so obviously your problems are much bigger, like the world issues and things of that nature and whatever else is going on. And we always try to diminish young people's experiences. And that's the reason why they're not talking to you. That's the reason why they're not opening up to you. That's the reason why there's so much turmoil in your relationship with them, because you refuse to acknowledge their individuality and invalidate their experiences in their own journey. It may be minute to you. It may be something small compared to things that you've experienced or are currently experiencing as an adult, but nonetheless, it is still valid. Their experience is still valid. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. And before I do, you know, I got to give a quote. So in honor, you know, it's Black History Month, child. Hello, God. So I want to give some love to Miss Mary Clyde Bethune, honey. Hello, God. Um, she states, we have a powerful potential in our youth and we must have the courage to change old ideas and practices so that may so that we may direct their power toward good ends. Amen. 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 And you know what? Just because I feel like, you know, Beyonce, I was going through some quotes today, child, and I was like, Beyonce says something really cute, girl. And I think this relates to our topics. Um, and she's a black woman. So hello, girl. Happy Black History Month, honey. Um, and Beyonce said, you have the power to change perception, to inspire and empower and to show people how to embrace the true beauty and strength that's inside all of us. Mm, I get chills. Yes, be, yes, Queen Bay, honey. We yeah. respect you. Girl. Gotta hey. love you gotta love me. Period. Beyonce. But yeah, guys, that's it for tonight. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode, what is this, three of the Yes God Roundtable season four, honey. Continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share all the things. Everyone's links are in the description box of this video for easy access, girl. And yes, I, you said it, easy access. I don't know if they'll grant you access into their bedroom, but... no. They'll grant you access to all the things they have going on. Would you guys have any final words for the kids? I love y'all. Great show as always. And thanks for supporting. Shout out to Marsha. She said she loves the panel and she's going to subscribe now, child. Yeah. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Yes. Thank you, boo. Yeah. Shout out to Hermit TV and Ray Alexander for your commentary today. I love y'all. Thank you. Yeah. To Bay Bay. <laughs> and just thank everyone for supporting and engaging in the conversations. And, you know, we go there, child. And anybody watching the replay, girl. Period. If there's an issue, inbox me. Hello. <laughs> uh, don't inbox me. I don't need the negativity yeah, in my life. No, please don't inbox me. I don't care. They'll be okay. They get sent right to one of those request folders that takes me three months to look at. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Well, if that's it, we're gone. Yeah. All right. Take care, y'all. Be blessed and never stressed. And remember that health is wealth, y'all. And we'll see you guys. Oh, next and week. if you found your taxes, check the IRS out, bitch. You could be getting your money this week. Hello, guys. Well, I oh. hope so. I need my check. <laughs> In the words of Kimberly Lee from Set It Off, we need this money. <laughs> I need that money. For real, honey. All right, y'all. And take care. Be blessed. I already said that. Bye. <laughs>